Today on Grid Daily, it's just you, me, and Trevor Kuna of QNet. We're going to get real about the essence of direct selling. Some of you may know it as multi-level marketing. Know what you're thinking, but I promise you there's nuggets in this conversation. Trevor starts off the conversation by telling us about the day he decided to take a chance at life and make a move across seas for a vision that he had in mind that he wanted to fulfill. This is a move many of us question whether we have the courage to make, but he did it. He left it all behind. And this story begins to unfold some serious insight for anyone in business. We're peeling back the layers of QNET's current mission to make direct selling an impact-driven business model for people in emerging markets where it's not just an opportunity, it's a lifeline. Look, I even go as far as being able to share some of my own interactions as I brush shoulders with network marketing companies growing up and how they could have done things differently. And you'll be surprised at Trevor's response to that. As we begin to wind down, Trevor will leave us a nugget of wisdom involving leadership and the process of journaling and how it improves our ability to steer the ship when the storms hit. As you know, this show isn't just talk. It's about how that talk walks. And this is another classic episode in Grit Daily style. Without further ado, Trevor Kuna of QNet. Okay, Trevor, I'm super happy to have you here. You know, every day that I do this, I can't even believe that I get to have conversations with people doing amazing things all across the world. And in particular, from what I'm learning, our conversation is going to have topics that cross you know, uh, borders. We're talking yeah. uh, not just one place, you know, international. And I was once in a taxi cab in New York and someone told me, you know, unless you're doing business internationally, you're not doing business. You know, uh, so I guess we're really talking about business here, but in particular, uh, direct selling. But before we get there, before we get there, I'd love it if you could, and I got to get better about doing this. Just tell me in your own words how you view QNET and, and, and your work. Sure. Wow. Um, well, l- let, me, let me take a step back and, and give you a bit of a story here in terms of how I ended up uh, in, in QNET. Because I'm originally from Winnipeg, Canada, which is a very small, cold city uh, in, the heart of, in the heart of Canada. And uh, in 1999, uh, my uncle, who was working in QNET in Hong Kong, uh, he came over to visit for Christmas. And he was, um, he was obviously doing a lot of calls because of the, the time difference and whatnot. And uh, he said, hey, you know what? And I was like, what, 20, 21 at the time and uh, still in university. And he said, why don't you come to Hong Kong and you know, join this business and, and you, can, you can just work as, as, as an intern or you can start as a, as a copywriter or whatnot. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not, not really into traveling and going abroad and all that. I'm very comfortable in, 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 my, in my little cocoon in Winnipeg. And of course, my dad chimed in and said, you know, absolutely not. My son would never work for, you know, this, this uh, you know, suspicious company that's selling, you know, products uh, to, to many people. And, and I don't know anything about it. And I think it's a pyramid and my, my son will never work for this company. Fast forward like eight, nine years, and I'm still in Winnipeg, and I haven't spoken to my uncle since then, since the conversation. And it, it was just, it was kind of like a click where I realized, okay, hang on a second. I know where my life is heading. I know what every weekend is going to be like. And I think it's time I have some sort of change in my life. So I'm, I'm, looking, for, I'm looking for a challenge, right? And so I called him out of the blue and I didn't have his number. So I called my mom and I said, listen, mom, I need, I need, you know, Richard's number. And she gave me the number, called him and he's like, who's this? I said, well, this is Trevor, your nephew. And he's like, okay, wh- what's up? And he, I said, do, do you remember when you said, uh, you know, come to Hong Kong and, and, and look for a job uh, with, with, with QNET? He said, yeah. I said, well, I think I'm ready now. <laughs> he's like, okay, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, Put any words in for you. I'm not going to tell anybody to hire you. You got to go through the process. You got to, you know, submit your CV. Um, and in fact, you want to take a big risk. You sell all your stuff. You sell your condo, everything, and you buy a plane ticket. You come to Hong Kong and you do the interviews. I said, okay, fine. This was the biggest, biggest, you know, shift in mindset when you're when you're basically giving everything up and taking a risk and going for it. And of course, 
he's there. So I said, okay, what's the worst that can happen? So I ended up having interviews in Hong Kong. And I realized that, like you said, international business, I mean, it just opened up my, my, my world to what is actually out there. And I could not believe that this business, first of all, existed since 1998. This industry, when I got to understand more about it, when I started working in the company, is more than 100 years old. Unfortunately, it's, it's one of the probably the most misunderstood industries um, by far because you have, you have people that are very passionate about the opportunity that they have where they come from nothing. Like there are people in the company that, that we have, uh, that have joined the business in, in 1998, in 2005, 2010. They came from literally nothing, from all walks of life, from all corners of the world, you know, from Saudi Arabia, from, from Rwanda, from Uganda, from, from, you know, from Russia, from India, from UAE. It's, it's incredible. And they all have these different stories of how they came to know about this company called QNET and about the industry called direct selling. So what's fascinating for me is that in 1998, the founders thought, okay, we're going to marry two different concepts of e-commerce and direct selling so that it can be a truly global business. And you mentioned international. This business is truly international. Anybody can wake up in the morning and introduce this business and the products to somebody in a coffee shop, somebody in an airport, somebody online nowadays. And so it's so incredibly fascinating, but it's also challenging, Philip. It's incredibly challenging to manage the, you're managing the emotions of people because they become so excited. And I think you mentioned just before we started the, the, the interview or this, 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 uh, this conversation that you were approached after high school yeah. by, by several, you know, distributors from different, different companies in the industry and how passionate they were and how, you know, quote unquote aggressive they were. And I think that in some cases we, we have to be mindful and, and look out for the best interest of the consumer and make sure that they're not falling victim to uh, schemes that are only benefiting the seller and not benefiting the consumer or benefiting the, the new distributor. So, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but I think it, it kind of plants the seeds for this conversation. Yeah, no, it, hearing your story does give it a color and they do say show and then tell. And so knowing the, there was a psychologist I had interviewed who said that you never really grow up until you move away from home. And only mm. those who moved away from home can vouch for that. Uh, some people never do. It doesn't mean that you as an individual didn't grow. It's just something happens to the mind when you make that decision. And that was a pivotal moment when you decide, I mean, you sold everything, right? Yeah. And yeah. you jump into this. And now we did cover sort of something before we got started that there are, there are misunderstandings about what direct selling is right now. The people who approached me, there was nothing international about what they were doing per mm. se, right? And Looking back, what my main concern was is that, you know, I was coming out of high school and yes, anybody could do this. It what was always troubling. And to this day, I still struggle to understand is you reach out to people who are inexperienced and tell them you can be your own business owner. And, mm -hmm. you know, hustle can get you pretty far. Uh, but a lot of the times, the, the, the things that they were telling, and it was across the board because I did try them all because I was ambitious and I was passionate. Right. Uh, even since then, uh, was, Hey, who are your friends? Who are your family? And get started there, which is to be fair. And many on this podcast would say it's no different than trying to raise a, uh, friends and family round for, uh, for exactly. a startup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the difference is uh, when you're slanging, you know, and uh, you excuse the term, but like protein shakes and, and, you know, <laughs> or really sharp knives that may not be the sharpest knives in town, but that's how you're positioning it. Uh, or uh, we're talking about uh, retirement financial vehicles. When you don't have context for what those products are, uh, you don't have experience with target audience and what that means and like fund fundamentals, mm -hmm. I can see how someone can be disheartened, uh, end up in places that they didn't intend to maybe spend money or take money from people without really mm -hmm. understanding the product. But that was never international. What you do, Trevor, from what I'm understanding is we're talking about international and I'm not sure it's the same thing. Is it? Is is MLM direct selling or is there a difference? 
at the end of the day, direct selling is about moving products through people. And the, the beautiful part is, is what you mentioned in terms of you, you don't really change in, or you don't really grow until you, you leave home. Uh, the, the, the direct selling MLM model, it follows certain principles. And one of the, the best principles I have experienced as a corporate leader in, in the company is, is personal development and growth, leadership development. And so when you're talking about direct selling, a lot of people think about, you know, the, the sharpest knives in the drawer. You think about the protein shakes, but those are the products and those are the products you're selling to end consumers. But the people that are actually doing the selling, and I mean, Philip, you know, this having interviewed thousands of, of, of entrepreneurs and, and, and corporate leaders around the world that, how do I put this? Leadership is so important. Yeah. And if, if you're selling a concept, you're selling an idea, if you're, if you're not bought into it, if you don't understand the principles behind it, and if you don't recognize the need to, to serve others while doing it, and you're only treating it as this self-serving uh, business, then you're not going to get much out of it. And you're going to find out that those are the bad apples that are very selfishly wanting to only make a quick buck. Whereas direct selling MLM, which is very different from any type of industry because you ultimately have mentorship. You have people that have the 5, 10, 15, 20 years experience in the industry that are teaching you the ropes. They are teaching you how to handle rejection, how to handle objection. They're teaching you about the, you know, we have the saying, uh, slow is fast and fast is slow, where, you know, the, the newbies want to just, you know, go out and do presentations and they want to sell products and they're just super excited, but they forget about the fundamentals. They forget about, it's not about making the buck. It's not about making the first sale. It's about creating customers for life. It's about understanding. Okay. Philip. You and I are talking here. There is a reason why we're talking today. Like we were put in, we were put in front of each other's faces for some reason. So what am I to learn from this experience with this human being and cherish that and, and make it a very enriching relationship? Now, could you be successful in the, in the business? Yes. Could you not? It's also possible because you are very ambitious, but I'm there to hold your hand along the way. So you're not going to have that. Like if, if you're a founder and you're going through a seed round and you're talking to friends and family, you're pretty much by yourself. And, and you might have a mentor or two that have done it in the past, but there really is no support system. And a lot of people are going to tell you, oh, this is, you know, why are you doing this? You're going to fail. You're going to lose all your money and whatnot. But if you have a support system, which is what we have in, in, in direct selling and in, in MLM, you have people that have gone through it. You have people that want you to succeed because it's all about that community. It's all about building a stronger version of you. So you can, you can talk about the knives. You can talk about the protein shakes, but the ultimate product is really a stronger Philip, a, a Philip that is giving back to the world, a Philip that is, you know, serving above self. And that's one of the philosophies we have um, in the industry and Actually, in our, in our company, we talk about service above self. And we talk about the fact that in order for you to make a difference in the world, you have to work on yourself first. And this business, I mean, it, it's very difficult because especially nowadays, younger generation, they look at direct selling and MLM and they're like, uh, sorry, not for me. But it ultimately results in them becoming a better person. So they, we're trying to open up people's eyes to the fact that this business is the business of the future. It's not only about selling products. It's also about building a better version of yourself. Yeah. So, No, yeah. I, I love where you're going with this because I do think without, had I not had those experiences early on and had they given me the proper context of where this fit in my journey as mm -hmm. a professional, in terms of like, you're going to be able to take these skills with you wherever you go. Exactly. Uh, there are going to be fundamental things that you'll later go on to uh, be able to build. And if there was some time taken to train me, <clears throat> excuse me, on understanding sort of, if you haven't come across the business model canvas, right? Uh, yeah. By, uh, yeah. Alex, Alex Osterwald. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they had taken something like that, 
and value proposition design, and then segued and said, so this is a product that has already had a customer designed in mind for this. And with this, this saves you the trouble of trying to figure out what your offering is, which is a huge challenge for many business owners, yes. right? The, the task on you is more lead generation, right? And so for that, you're welcome to tap into people that are close to you that know you. And then there's all those memes on social media talking about a friend you haven't talked to in forever hits you up and says they want to meet for coffee. And then exactly. you do, and then they don't let you go because, you know, but that that's no different than someone reaching out on LinkedIn and saying, hi, you have a blue shirt. I have a blue shirt too. Would you like a mobile app? It's just yeah. not being done right. But yeah. There's this idea of affiliate marketing that I've heard floating around over the years as well. Is this different from direct selling or just another name for it? It's different from direct selling in the sense that it's, it's kind of, you're not having to build a team and you're not having to, to uh, worry about the development of, 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 of your sales force. Affiliate marketing is very much like D to C, direct to customer. And direct selling is actually moving towards adopting an affiliate marketing model for people who don't want to build a team. Like there are people who are happy with just doing a lot of social media campaigns, influencer, influencer campaigns on a product that they're a very big fan of. And then they just acquire customers through their social media channels, through the affiliate marketing program. They make commissions and all that. And that's something that direct selling is also embracing because not everybody Philip, not everybody wants to be, you know, the, the, the upline, as we call it, you know, the team leader of an organization of 50,000 people and manage the emotions of all these individuals and manage the egos of all these people. Some people don't want to do that. They're like, Hey, I've got, I found a great product from this company and they've given me the tools that allow me to talk about the product because the company has trained me on the product benefits, on the value proposition. They've trained me on all the, uh, all the ways to analyze the competition so that I know how to properly promote the product on social media. They've taught me all the policies on what to say and what not to say, especially with claims, right? Because we, we're, we, we don't want to have people uh, claiming that this is a miracle drug or this is going to grow your hair back or within two days and whatnot. We want to avoid all of that. So direct selling companies spend a lot and they invest a lot of time on compliance and governance to make sure that whether it's a direct selling distributor or an affiliate marketer that is in the direct selling uh, organization, that this is what you can say and this is what you cannot say in order to preserve the integrity of the, of the product and of the company. So yes, in, in short, affiliate marketing is definitely becoming one of the potential channels for direct selling. Ah, got it. You know, I, yeah. had, a, I had a friend recently. Uh, she's awesome. And she happened to run into me and she's always up to something new when I see her, right? This is just, it's just the way she is, which is a good characteristic for someone in this line of work. And she invited, she says, you're drinking that energy drink. I said, yeah, uh, but most just because I didn't sleep last night, yeah, you know, and this is like a sugar. I try to make all my arguments as to why that's okay, even though I mean, we all know it's not. And Exactly. You know, but uh, she said, well, I just happened to start with a company and uh, we do like an energy drink uh, sort of thing, but it's like a it's like a little juice box or something. And it's like a gel. I said, "Oh, okay, cool. Um, what flavor do you want?" I said, "What do you mean?" And she's like, "Yeah." And so she's, if I understood correctly, she has to come out of her own pocket for the product, right? But uh, she's going to send me a sample. And you know, she was my friend, so I said, "Okay, right on." Right. The telltale sign I always come across, and I I would say if direct selling and, and, and MLM and affiliate marketing can solve this, I feel like it would do them a lot more of a, a service to be able to solve this. Uh, and, you know, not that you asked, you know, but I'm just yep. sharing with you something that I've come across because it's become a telltale sign, at least for someone like me. But then again, I'm not the average consumer. Uh, she said, whenever I started asking more questions, she said, why don't I introduce you to the leadership uh, at the company, you know, and, and they'll explain more of the product to you. And I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, this is a energy gel. <laughs> you know, I, if you didn't take the time to understand those things and you, somebody, sometimes you can pass for it when it's like one of those financial vehicle services, like yeah. you know, America or uh, I forget what the other one was, that World Financial Group that I came across. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
you know, if financials can be hard for, for especially younger people to understand. Um, but an energy gel, you know, for me, that's always a telltale sign that maybe I have no interest in this just because the person who's trying to push this product on me, or give, even if they're giving me the free sample out of their pocket, they don't understand the product well enough. They haven't studied the value proposition design, right? Yes. Have they yeah. identified whether or not I'm a key partner that they could bring in, right? Am yeah. I a key, uh, am I a key customer? You know, the ideal customer that aligns with that value, all those things just, I kind of could have been, and I did try it and it tasted absolutely dreadful. So I, oh, I said, wow. I see, I, I said, it's not a good product. I, 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 but thank you. You know, she's like, oh, okay. Cause she followed up. So yeah. she does have all the qualities necessary. She does do all the things. And I only know that because I've tried all this before, this type of work. And those are the things they tell you to do. If you feel like you can't explain it, just pass it on to me, you know? And I don't yeah. know if that's good leadership because that's yeah. enabling them to not take ownership of things, right? And what are your thoughts yeah. on that? And, and does any of this sound familiar? Yeah, it definitely does. And it, 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 it goes back to the training program. You know, if, if, if she is, let's just take your friend, if, if she has not gone through a training program where she understands the, the, the materials of the product, she understands the ingredients, she understands, you know, how to speak to different types of customers because you're one type. You're one type that's looking for energy, like quick energy, because you didn't get sleep last night. And you're already a consumer of an existing, you know, energy beverage. Right. So that's a totally different conversation that she needs to have than with somebody who doesn't even touch the stuff. Right. So there's the ones where you need to help them switch. And then there's the there's the ones where you need to help them actually start consuming because of all the nutritional benefits. I, again, I don't know what, what yeah, energy... Yeah, it was one of those, like, yeah, you, you got yeah. it though. You know your stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, it, it boils down to training and to pass it on to the leadership only only shows that maybe she has to do a bit more of her, her own homework before she goes out and introduces this. And maybe this is a, a lesson for her as well. You know, all these interactions that she's having with, let's say with Philip and 10 other Philips ultimately will... And if she's, again, if she's ambitious and she's consistent, I mean, the 11th time she's going to meet a Philip, it'll be a no brainer sale because she'll know how to handle the conversation. The, and, and that's the thing with, with direct selling is that usually there's going to be an upline or some sort of mentor that will sit with you at the end of the week or at the end of the month and review, you know, how is your performance? How is your activity uh, this week? How many presentations did you do? How many product demos did you do? Um, you know, what are people, uh, how are people uh, objecting to, to the product? How are they rejecting the product? You know, what are the questions are they having? And then that mentor would sit with her and, and go through a development, you know, a development program to say, okay, now your next goal is to do this. Now present me the product. They go through role play and all that. I mean, it's, it's your standard sales, sales training, but in direct selling, it's very personal. Philip, the, the, the fact of the matter is that direct selling is so successful because of that personal touch. You, you could have been on, on social media and you could have saw, uh, saw an ad for the same drink, but maybe you wouldn't have clicked on it because it's, it's just an ad, right? But because she's your friend, there's already some level of established trust. So you're like, okay, I'll listen to you. Let me hear you out, right? Yeah. And then she's got to do the work. You've got to make sure that she's ready for every level of all the no's that are inside your mind. Like, no, not for me. No, taste is horrible. Not, well, you couldn't answer this question. So if she doesn't go back to the drawing board, if she doesn't go back and do the homework, then she'll eventually, you know, then she'll get discouraged. And that's what happens. Philip, let, let's be honest. Not everybody is successful in sales, whether it's direct selling, insurance, real estate, automotive sales, whatnot. People, a lot of people cannot handle rejection. They don't have the, the, the grit, as they call it. Yeah. So it's not an easy business, which is, which is another thing because people think, okay, uh, direct selling, they associate it with get rich, uh, get rich quick scheme or pyramid <laughs> selling and whatnot. But what they don't realize is the amount of work it takes on a daily basis. Imagine you're, you're having a nine to five job or an evening job. And then somebody introduces this opportunity to you. Now, if you're thinking, okay, all I need to do is sell product. That's not all you need to do. You need to really uh, do a lot of introspect and say, hey, listen, how much time can I commit to this? And how much 
what is my return on my time? You know, what is that time value proposition? Because if I'm going to be dedicating time to talking to 10 Phillips every week and I'm getting 10 Phillips telling me no, after four weeks, I'm going to say, this is not for me. But maybe after the fifth week, there could be a click where the, you know, finally the, the 51st Phillips says, you know what? I'm actually interested in this product or I'm interested in this opportunity. And a lot of people, they don't have the, the stomach. They don't have the stomach to go through all of that. You know what I mean, Philip? They don't have the stomach to be told no. They don't have the stomach to be told you're stupid. You know, you're going to fail. And, and, and again, it goes to the principles of, of, of the company I work for because the founders, when they first started this business, they actually started the business out of a crisis. They were working for another network marketing company from the US uh, in 97. And that company basically shuttered its doors. They said, we're going to stop shipping product. We're going to stop paying commissions. And our founders were in the Philippines. Uh, Oh, they weren't our founders at the time, but they were in the Philippines. And they had around 2,000 customers, distributors. And then they had to basically go to these individuals who had put their trust in them and say, listen, what you paid for, we actually can't ship. Oh, and what you sold, we actually can't pay you commissions on that. So imagine that, that, that crisis. So our, our founder, the, the, you know, the, I call him number one, uh, Vijay Esworan, he could have just said, yeah, you know what, let's just call it a wash and we move on with our life. He said, absolutely not. We have to keep our promise to these individuals because these individuals put their faith in us. And it was that day, it was like that week where they brought everybody into this ballroom in Manila. And they announced the birth of this company. And for 25 years, despite any crisis we've faced, they've always said, we will always keep our promise. We will always make sure that products are shipped. Every week we're paying commissions. I mean, hundreds of millions of commissions to to thousands upon thousands of distributors globally every single week without fail because of our commitment. And the commitment was what, the founders had given to, you know, to the distributors in that ballroom in, in the Philippines in 98. And I just, every time there's a challenge that we face and every time there's, there's a new opportunity, I always remember this is, I mean, why we do this is because of that, that one person in Indonesia or that one person, um, you know, in, he's in South Africa or in Nigeria or in Russia or in Germany or in, or in Spain that, tried something, tried whatever, you know, maybe uh, selling a product in another type of industry or tried doing real estate or tried doing their own thing. And all of a sudden they discovered QNet. And the reason why we're so different is because of those founding principles. I, I, I talked about service above self, right? So it, another unique thing about this company, Philip, in, in the industry of direct selling, a lot of the top, top, top leaders you know, the, the money makers, the rainmakers, they're the ones that when they come to our, when they come to an event, whether it's, you know, an event in the U S or what in the industry, not specific to our company, but when they go to an event, they're glorified, they're edified. They're the ones that are like the Kings and Queens of the industry. But in our company, if you are making a lot of money from this business, because you've sold a lot of product, and you've built a massive sales force. Your role, your obligation is to serve at the event. So you, you have our top distributors who, are, who have been top distributors for five years, 10 years, 15 years, that will literally come to the event in a, in a black polo shirt, black cargo pants, and they will serve. They'll move chairs around. They'll set up the, the F&B. They'll handle the security. They'll handle the, the audiovisual. They'll handle the, well, like the general well-being of, of, of the participants that come to the event because a lot of our distributors are doctors. They're, you know, medical pr- practitioners. So it, it's, it's something that you will not see in any other company. And that's why I love this, this, this company because it's, it not only provides a business opportunity with fantastic products, but it provides a door that if you decide to walk through that door, you can become a totally different person. It truly does offer you transformation. So I hope Philip. You know, whenever you, you seem uh, wanting to travel internationally, please come to Malaysia and you'll see what I mean in terms of 
the types of stories we have and the lives we've touched because of this promise, because of that fateful day in 98, and just because of, of what we truly believe in, is that this industry can change lives. Yeah, no, and, and I love the, the founding principles. I think a, a workplace culture, a company culture makes or breaks whether or not people will stick around long enough, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, with principles like that and ensuring that anyone in leadership remembers that you're in service. And so the higher you yes. are, the more in service you are. Uh, I think those are, those are incredible qualities that I know a couple of CEOs personally that I may have worked for over the years that could have used a little more service in their, uh, in their makeup and their character uh, and what it would have done for them. But then again, you know, some people can afford not to have manners, you know, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think, I think uh, I like the, the narrative. And I also like the energy that you're bringing to this because I can, I can also see, for example, I didn't take into account, I could have been number 11 instead of number 57 for my friend. Right. And there's no mm-hmm. doubt she's going to get better and succeed at this. Cause that's yeah. how awesome she is. Right. I guarantee that. Uh, what I think would have been cool had someone told me a long time ago when I was younger, Hey, look, you're going to walk away with these skills no matter what. So you're going to be able to say you've done over X amount of calls or X amount of sales and you are responsible for X amount of dollars in sales, which will be useful no matter where you go. Because if there's one thing every business needs more of is salespeople. And this is where you'll be able to get that. And most places don't always give you that opportunity for sales, right? Mm -hmm. If it was shaped in that way and sort of painted, painted out for me in that way, I maybe would have been more inclined to see it through because I do recall when I first started doing sales and the amount of mistakes I was making on the phone, but how valuable it was to have my mentor sit there and like role play with me and reject me on purpose every step of the way to the point where I was frustrated. And I said, what is this? Why am I doing this? Feels dumb. You name it, right? But it really did eventually shake me out of trying to sell somebody something and just find out, well, what do you need? Right. Yes. What's going on? And that shift again, come coming into service. Right. So if there was one, just to put the, the, the bow on top as we b- begin to close this out, if there was one thing that you've learned about sales or about leadership after all your years, uh, and your, your, your long journey as it will continue, right? With QNET and, and the work that you've done, what is the gem in sales or leadership that you could leave behind or, or even just your own go to when you're in doubt? Wow. I, what, okay. That is a, that is a big question. That is a big question because I, I look at all of the learnings that BJ has, has given to me. And I mean, the ego, the, the, the ego is the, the biggest, the biggest battle every single day. And you mentioned the CEOs of companies that, that you worked for. And so if, if we accept the fact that the ego exists and we pause and, and think before responding to somebody and, and ask yourself, is this going to add value to the conversation or is this going to destroy value? Like, am I going to make this person feel horrible or am I going to help uplift this person and leave them better off than they were? Because there's that saying where, you know, people don't, what is it, Philip? You got to remind me now. People don't remember how you treat them. They remember how you feel, how you make them, them feel. feel. Yeah. Right. And so this business has taught me that in, in sales and leadership, it is a people's business. And you will not be able to grow a company unless you have people who believe in you. You have people that believe that you have their best interests in mind. and. I mean, this industry has taught me so much that it's, it, yeah, it's, it's okay. You're selling products. There's the PL. There's, you know, the annual growth that you're going to be shooting for. But even if people leave this business, like we've had, we've had a lot of people who have decided to move on and they've decided to start their own companies or they've decided to start their own charitable initiative because our company is very big in the community. So you look at the difference that we've made, not only within the company, but people who decided to come into the company, develop, grow, right? And then move out of the company 
and then the difference they make in the world and the impact they make in the world. I mean, that's the most important thing. And if you can put your ego aside, what in everything you do, if you can just put your ego aside and ask yourself, is this creating value or is it destroying value? Then I think that that you would end up making a, a much bigger difference if you're always focusing on creating value and leaving people better than when they, they came in. That, that, that would be the big thought from, from yours truly. Yeah, no, and I love that. And, and, and my question is, what allows you to make that decision to prompt you to take that pause? Because that is the quality yeah. that I believe creates that. If you don't mind me getting just a little deeper, yeah. was there an experience that taught you this lesson yourself? Or is this just part of the development you had over many years? Is it the way you were raised? What you allows what? you to have that perspective? All credit. All credit goes to Vijay. In 2006, he wrote a book called The Sphere of Silence, In the Sphere of Silence. And it's a book that's similar to other books. If you just kind of strip it away, it's a, it's a time management book. But his book is different in the sense that it attacks the ego. And it also says, if you can just take one hour out of each day if you could just take one hour out of each day and give it to yourself and sit in silence and ask yourself all these introspective questions, you can, you can command and control the 23 hours that you have. Of course, you have eight hours of sleep, but the, uh, the, the waking hours that you have, you can control because a lot of people, pretty much everybody that is outside of the 1% in this world, they've given their control to the world and they, they blame others. You know, oh, I don't have time for this. Or the reason why I failed was because of this person. And the reason why this isn't working is because of that. But with Sphere of Silence, you sit down and you ask yourself questions of, okay, what, what happened yesterday? What could I have done better yesterday? And you're writing it down. You're literally looking in the mirror on, on that paper and you're writing down all the stuff that, that really you should not have done. You question yourself. You ask yourself, what can I do better today? You, you ask yourself, what can I plan to achieve for the week? What kind of big goals can I personally uh, plan to achieve in the next month, year, 10 years? You know, the, the book itself also, you know, challenges you to uh, improve your memory because one of the sections in the book is that, okay, now you, ne- now you need to read for 10 minutes. And after reading for 10 minutes, you write down a summary of what you read because it forces you to improve your memory. So VJ, he just created this incredible concept in the sphere of silence because he said silence is golden. If you can just dedicate or devote one hour every morning, you can take control of the rest of your life. And this, this tool is readily available to everybody and anybody. And this tool has changed. I've, I've seen it. And it's changed my life in terms of how I view the world. It's changed the lives of people who came in to the company as distributors, couldn't speak English, never sold anything in their lives, were too afraid to speak on stage, didn't know how to have a conversation. And you see the evolution of, of these, the transformation of these individuals over time because they apply the principles that VJ has given us. And so I, it's a gift. He's given us a gift. Now, whether or not you want to take the gift, it's up to you. Right. But in fact, I'll probably, well, Drew, is I'll try to extend a copy to you so that you can actually understand what I'm talking about and you'll realize. I love that. I mean, you can, like, we have in our, in our office in, in, in Kuala Lumpur, we have a general assembly, like a town hall every week. And once a week, one of our staff uh, members, one of our team members, will open up the book, Sphere of Silence, and they'll read just one little quote from it. And when you read that quote, it's like, it just makes you stop and think, like, geez. Maybe I shouldn't have said that to so and so. Maybe I shouldn't have made that decision because it was an emotional decision. I didn't take the time to think it through. Maybe I do need to rethink my career, uh, my career goals. It's it's absolutely incredible what this this gift that VJ has given. So, yes, the direct selling industry is beautiful. Everything is great, but it boils down to the individuals that make a difference in other individuals' lives. And that's why I'm so grateful that, that, that BJ has given us that gift, not only of this industry, not only the platform, but also, you know, sphere of silence. 
Yeah, no, I, I can now take that, internalize it and see how when you take the intentional time and effort mm-hmm. to sit there and create reflection at, 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 uh, at length and on regular intervals. Yes. When something is happening in real life speed, if you will, pardon the phrase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You now have trained your mind to pause and reflect. Therefore, I can see how that can evolve into a true just trait of character and which is capable of in real time taking the moment to pause. Yeah. Say potentially, wow, uh, what do I do with this? Right. And yeah. then yeah. make the choice to create value, if you will. And Absolutely. I can, I can see how that development can take place with a ritual or a practice like that. And I think it's worth all the, all the things that we've been talking about all day today. Uh, with our conversation. I personally believe that these are great qualities and it sounds like QNIT has great leadership behind it. So with that, I want to roll out the red carpet for you. What is your call to action for people? Do you want them to go to a website, a social media channel in particular? What would you have them do? Oh, my, my favorite go-to nowadays, uh, especially because we, the, the, the team has revamped it is, is Cubas. Cubas is our blog and that is your go-to about all information about QNET and about the industry, because if you're going to have a lot of questions. When you hear about QNET, you're like, okay, what is this all about? It's, it's QNET. What does this all mean? But when you go to QBuzz, which is our blog, you'll find out more about what this industry can do for people. You'll find out more about the products that the company offers. You'll find out about the success stories that, um, that QNET has created. As a result of you know the compensation plan, the products, uh, the the training, and the personal development, and you can just keep in touch with the company, and and, and eventually, you know, you want to do the business with Unit because you understand more about it. Then yes, so be it. We'd, we'd love to have you on board. So yeah, right Cubuzz is, is is my go to right now. And is that Cubuzz.com or what? Where was it's, it's one of those. Uh, hang on. I'm not a URL guy anymore. I just, no, I just, you're, I just you're use totally the brand name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Qbuzz, it's qbuzz.qnet.net. Okay, yeah, right Qbuzz.qnet.net. And that's Q, literally the letter Q. Exactly. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it should be yeah. easy to remember. Well, yeah. hey, look, Trevor, it, it has been, I think, a very insightful conversation and one cause for pause and reflection, if, if you will, uh, throughout the conversation and Listening to your journey, I can see how you got to where you are today and why you're in leadership. And uh, I love the stance you take on it because it's reminiscent of that phrase that many CEOs right now uh, are familiar with, which is servant leadership. It's a real thing and it does impact people. And what's cool to me more than anything is being able to, to know that there are people out in the world who are being given opportunities that otherwise wouldn't exist. We didn't even cover that, the access that they have to things with QNET, right? That they may not have had with any company local to them and what that, yeah. what, what that creates. So again, thank you for all that you do. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate the time.